what is the influence of the pandemic uh, the last three years and still ongoing the zero COVID policy in China um, if there's more risk we go into details into some more details later but if you see the situation now the last three years and you also witness them as uh, as someone living in Shanghai and so on what do you think do you see more a chance or more risk for the for the European companies here in China Well, I would I would separate this question into two questions. One of them is risk versus opportunity, and the other one is uh, pandemic versus zero COVID. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, we shouldn't forget that in in entrepreneurship, in enterprise, risk is opportunity. It, it, we have to look at it the way you look at investment. If you have hundred percent security, then you have zero percent return, mm. and this is how companies actually make their money. They they take risks and then based on those risks, they have a higher profit margin. So I, I think this is important because otherwise companies wouldn't be in China in the first place. If you if you look at China at any given time, it has always been a, a more difficult market than the traditional market. So uh, you can say SMEs, small and medium sized enterprises in general, or you can look at larger companies, but why would an SME go to China at all? Mm -hmm. Many yeah. of these companies, they make a, make okay money in their home market. Uh, they go to China because the market is bigger, because their competitors are not in China, because they have yeah. a great idea that, that, can, that has the space in the Chinese market. So that means risk is opportunity, if you are willing to take it. Yeah. And then the second thing is I would separate Uh, the pandemic from zero COVID. And I would do that in very specific ways because I think the influence on enterprising in China is just the opposite. If you look at the pandemic, then yeah. of course the pandemic was a huge opportunity for, for uh, Western companies in China because um, the West, uh, which usually means North America and Europe, but we can also add Australia uh, into this context. Uh, they, were very heavily hit by the pandemic. They, their markets were closed down. There were lockdowns and so on. And in the meantime, China managed to maintain a fairly vibrant and open internal market. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge opportunity. And I think many, both SMEs and larger firms, I think that's mm -hmm. the way they survived because yeah. uh, their China businesses were uninterrupted. And I don't just mean retail in China, manufacturing in China. But I also mean, for example, they could source from China because production was ongoing while, let's say, factories in Italy and, and Australia and the United States were locked down. Yeah. And then we have to separate that from the so-called zero COVID policy, mm -hmm. which is basically from the Western perspective is post pandemic. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in that respect, I think the challenges outweigh the opportunities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because just the opposite happened. So uh, now there is higher demand in retail. There is there is a higher like uh, factories reopened in the West. International mm -hmm. travel has reopened. But but China, um, that internal market has started to suffer. So I, yeah. you know, I went I was in China all through the pandemic except for half a year in 2020 and mm -hmm. then starting March of this year. Yeah. When I went back to China in the autumn of 2020, then for let's say less than half a, half a year, I was still experiencing that relatively open internal market. So whereas in Europe, it was impossible to do keynotes in conferences and do workshops and Factories were still locked down, schools, restaurants, and so on. In China, all of those things were open. And then yeah. in the summer of 2021, then China gradually started closing down again. Mm -hmm. So what, what happened in early 2020, it started happening again. But uh, in my assessment, more, more for political than for public health reasons. So first, what you uh, what you noticed is that traveling between Chinese cities became harder. Yeah. And then moving within cities became harder. And then the zero COVID policy started. And then, uh, you know, tests everywhere, venues closed, uh, mm. people's mobility started suffering. 
people started quitting because they they got fed up with them uh they didn't necessarily look for a new job they went back to their hometowns mm -hmm. uh so um the the pandemic and the post pandemic zero covid policy they had exactly the opposite effects yeah yeah very well explained yeah that's really i think totally makes sense to to separate this way and to see mm -hmm. it in this different uh, uh ways that pandemic is not like zero covid of course yes yeah. then uh what you can see is china basically implicitly asks every single expat are you in or are you out mm -hmm. if you're in if you if you are willing to commit to china and and these days it includes the lack of international travel yeah because only if you work for a very rich company can they mm -hmm. afford to send you abroad and send you back for like 10,000 euros uh, at least for the flights and then put you through the quarantine and of course there is the disruption of productivity so uh, large multinationals can do it but SMEs and entrepreneurs are not willing to do that so in very simple terms it means if you if you're in China then you stay in China uh, you, uh, you you give up your international network you don't see your family abroad and so on but there are there um the chinese government makes it easier to enterprise in china for those people so for example it is much easier now to get permanent residence in china than five years ago mm -hmm. if you qualify for the for for all the the administrative requirements so if you go on linkedin you can see yeah. those pictures like you know this grinning expat with the green yeah. card is much yeah. much more often than before okay. And yeah. also, obviously, because because most foreigners are leaving, it's easier to find a great job. I know I know at least a dozen people who became CEOs in China in the last year, well, because there is a shortage of international workers, and and uh, and those yeah. who stay, they have a huge advantage. Also, if you're enterprising, I mean, if you if you are staying there now, there are the, the Chinese government starts uh, new incubators, uh, new startup funds, and so on but if you're not completely in then you're completely out obviously what most entrepreneurs did for the last two decades of visiting China every quarter until they start up a business there and even then they are in and out that is yeah. practically impossible to do yeah I also worked uh, in a general management of, of of German companies and international companies and the CEOs were always so happy to come to China where was always everyone wanted to come to China was so happy to uh, to have here some okay you know some meetings and then uh, enjoy the the country and the and, and whatnot and so yeah, you know now yeah, it's interesting that you think just, this just this list uh, make a, make a 10 bullet point list about what what were all those things that they were looking forward to in China yeah. And most of those things are disrupted now. Yes. So they yes. flew into the country in 10 days. They they visited seven cities. They went out. They networked. They they did sightseeing. They look at China now. Um, it's 50-50. Maybe you can fly in the country. Making, you can do that kind of agenda. But maybe <clears throat> four out of the seven cities you wanted to uh, visit are inaccessible. Maybe. Do you know how many? I, I recall at least three or four stories when mm. the ceo was sent into the country it's it's difficult to fly directly into beijing or shanghai right now right mm. so they do these kind of detours like uh you arrive in chengdu then you do the quarantine in chengdu then you yeah. go to shanghai then you take a train and so on then chengdu got locked down the mm. ceo was there in quarantine for 10 days then he went home yeah he didn't even he didn't even set foot in china itself yeah yeah so it's just a it's just a big um gamble so if do you think that anyone would now dare to start a business in china so if really if if you are a sme and you had plans to uh, everything was prepared and you really wanted to start because the market opportunity as you described before is still there and and so on what do you think would it make sense to start now or should you wait or is there a way you still can do it now to to start no, no, no. your I mean, of course of course yeah. i mean all you have to do if, if somebody asks me this question and people ask me this question a lot so yeah. um 
and let's say Westerners, again, North America and the EU, let's say, mm-hmm. or, or Europe, because because those are the people who are the most spoiled, let's, let's say. So you live in a very, you normally live in a very transparent, very reliable environment. Then, then go and look at the statistics of how many Westerners start companies or started companies during the last couple of years in places like Honduras or South Sudan. You will be surprised. And of course, China is still a much more welcoming place than any of those. But again, we have to remember that risk equals opportunity. So number one, I would encourage people to start a business in China if Mm -hmm. they, because if they have a a piece of know-how, a piece of intellectual property or a technological solution that China really needs, yeah. Then you can you can walk into China and within China on clouds, and mm-hmm. you can make an awful lot of money. You will have mm-hmm. very few administrative hurdles. You can arrive in China if you if you get one of those one of those VIP visas. You know uh, there are there are these spe- specific visa categories. Like you have you want to start a, a company based on some artificial intelligence solution or something like this. Mm-hmm. I mean. You will register yourself in some startup incubator and they give you a lawyer and they give you a, so, and mm-hmm. it can be an amazing place to start a business in, but you have to put up with the inconveniences of, of everything else. And then again, mm-hmm. it depends on where you're coming from, if you see what I mean. Like yes. um, maybe maybe you were enterprising in Russia before, maybe you were enterprising in sub-Saharan Africa before, and then China is mm-hmm. is, is is a relative... Um, mm-hmm. improvement maybe you were in silicon valley but you already hate that kind of environment you you want to change and then change is what it is um and also it, it is very personal people who are relatively introverted who don't mind uh, spending time alone mm. they are much better with china right now because mm-hmm. uh, it's not a party capital anymore <laughs> so yeah it, i i would and also people do People do. I mean, I get a lot of emails every week about how to get into China. Mm-hmm. I, I get many uh, emails and messages everywhere from people who already determined to, they made up their mind to enter China. They already have the ticket. They already have the, they have the visa. And once they are there, they would like to reach out to the local network. 